Hello everyone, it's Margaret 46550 and today I'm going to teach you how to set and reset a mouse trap. And what I have here is a standard mouse trap. Um it's got the pedal, the lock, and the little, little snapper. So uh, I'm gonna set my camera up so it's not gonna fall. There we go. Now mm, the instructions on the packet are confusing as all get out. So I'm going to teach you how to set up a mouse guard trap. And I'm pretty sure most traps are set up like these, and these are real cheap. But before, I want to just tell you that we don't have mice, we have a mouse. And the reason we have a mouse is not because our house is dirty, because our house is extremely clean. It's our neighbor. Um, we have two neighbors, and one, she works a lot, and she's not home, and she has a son, and I really don't think she cleans a lot. My neighbor is kind of lazy, but she's pretty, but, and then my other neighbor, she's elderly, and I know she's always had mice, and she just recently moved out. She's kind of too old to live on her own. She's fallen one too many times, so... As she's cleaned out her stuff in her closet, or as her family has, I think that's stirred up the mice a little bit, because they could usually get away in her apartment. So, I'm going to teach you. So, before you set up this, you want to have your bait ready, because you want to put the bait on here before you set it up, so you don't trigger it and hurt yourself, hurt your finger. Because this is meant to break a neck of a mouse, so it could, it could maybe fracture, hairline fracture your finger if you get it hard enough. So, good bait that I've heard is cheese isn't the best, and even though it has cheese in the wrapper, cheese is kind of a wives' tale when it comes to mice. I know mice do love cheese, but another thing that I find that works best is peanut butter. Um, also chocolate works, so I would imagine anything from there to Nutella, I heard fruit works, so it really all depends. If you want to put cheese on here, go ahead, put cheese. But if I could teach you to, if I could tell you to put anything there, put peanut butter. Okay, so you have your peanut butter, and you put it on your little pedal. You want to probably put a little underwood so it, the m mouse is more liable to trick it and trigger it, and it snapping and it being a successful snap. And what a successful snap is, the mouse triggers the bait and it's a clean kill meaning the neck is broken there's no injury to the mouse really besides the broken neck and instantly killing it and not having it inhumane which I think PETA is the reason that um, sticky traps are no longer for sale they have poison pellets and other things like this that are much more expensive and the thing about poison pellets is they don't kill the mice instantly and they might get under fridges and start smelling and you definitely don't want that. That's going to be a hassle. This is a clean kill. It's n it's an it's a humane death <laughs> as much as rodents come. So before you flush out the stinker. So either you might if you're an expert and you really want to catch this thing, you might want to smoke the trap too. So to get rid of the human scent like you do on game traps, like for deer and such. Okay, so you put your bait, you put it under so it's more likely to be successful. So what you want to do is you carefully want to pull this back. And it's a little hard to pull back because, as you imagine, it's supposed to be strong enough to snap the neck of a mouse. Now once you pull it back, you want to make sure you've got a secure hold on it so you don't get your finger hurt. So that's pretty easy. All we've done is pull that back and put the bait on there. You want to put the bait on it first. Now, we have a little hook, and the hook just slips in there. You, always, you might need a person to help you. You don't want to pull the on them either. So, you might just lock that in there. And once you get that locked in there, it stays. And it should look like that. Now. You must be really careful too when you disarm it. But what the mice will, what the mouse will do is it'll come get the bait, trigger it, and then that'll make that move the hook, and killing the mouse. 
that's what a clean one is. And you might have a tricky mouse that's, you know, knows how to do this. So, how to disarm it if you do get an unsuccessful kill is you want to take, you want to do, basically do it in reser reverse, except you don't want to touch the handle yet. You don't want it snapping. So, make sure you hold that back, disarm the hook, and either you can quickly move your fingers away or slowly bring the trap down. And that's how you reset a mouse trap. And I don't care if you reset a mouse trap after it's already killed a mouse, but I just think that's gross. I would rather just pick up the mouse trap, throw it away, and have nothing to do with it. Usually they don't bleed, so um, that's good. So you you would want to set this. And the place where you want to set a mouse trap probably would be they love to get behind appliances like fridges and stoves. So you want to put this in the little crack between your counter and your um, refrigerator, or you might want to try and put it behind something. They love to be in back of appliances like that. Also, you want to stay out of the area as much as possible. Mice are usually nocturnal, but the reason you see mice is you usually spot one before you notice, ooh, there's rat droppings, because rat droppings are not, I mean, mouse droppings. No, hopefully you don't have a rat. This is a little too small for a rat. But mouse droppings kind of look like pencil lead. It's real small, so it's hard to tell, you know, from rat droppings. But you can, you usually um, can tell um, if you have a mouse by you see it. So that's what I have on the advice with mouse trap. And if you have a mouse trap that isn't exact but is similar. This should pro this video would probably have give you a good maybe advice on how to set it or a good start because those instructions are just confusing and I could never